Hi everybody, this is Christine. Welcome to Scrap and Rabbit. It's been a while since I posted a video and today's video is not a tutorial on scrapbooking or, or how to make journals. Unfortunately for me, it's a tutorial on my computer crapped out and I have to recover my data. Now usually I have pretty good backups of my system. I keep my uh, copy of my files on a terabyte drive and I just plug it into the USB port of my computer and I copy the files as I go. Um, I've been pretty good with the backups except there are a few files that were missing that I kind of wanted back. So I figure I would uh, recover the data from the hard drive on this computer. Now I think the first problem or the first mistake I did was buying this HP all-in-one computer. Um, I've seen quite a few reviews on YouTube about these systems and unfortunately it seems that in the computer repair world HP stands for horrible product and I'm tending to believe that now because I've had problems with HP products before um, including their printers. I had a printer for I guess just over a year and that crapped out. I've had this for just over four years. This model is the HP Pavilion all-in-one and it's a model number 23Q119 and I think the 119 stands for how many days before you start experiencing problems with this system. Uh, frankly I've had this and about a year into ownership maybe not even quite that long I've had to reformat to the original factory defaults because Windows updates cause some conflicts with hardware or whatnot and then another year later I've had to do it again and now once again um, the problem this time is it just won't boot up the uh, the light at the front when you start up the computer is just black there's no power it seems going to the machine although on the back of the computer there is a little green light where you plug in the uh, the power cable but there's no light that turns on on the front now I've heard that with these systems the problem often is that these are flat screen um, like giant they're like giant laptops and they use some laptop components in here but the screen is so large and it needs a lot of power to help keep everything cool so often what happens is the motherboard goes or the power supply goes and frankly I don't think it's worth repairing um, now some companies will offer service where they will recover your data for you and it's not cheap though I think they charge like hundred dollars and up if it's just a simple recovery about a hundred bucks and if it gets more complicated then they will charge you more and I certainly didn't want to pay that so I found this little gizmo here it's the USB 3 SATA hard drive flat docking station and this will work by inserting my hard drive into this docking station and then I attach it to my next computer and I can just copy my files over. So that's what I'm going to try doing today. I just received it from Amazon. I'll include a link to it as well. Oh, I should also mention that this unit is only $29.99 in Canada. So I figure at that price, I'm gonna risk it if I can recover my data. And also because I'm going to be transferring this to my laptop, which is, I hate to say, also an HP product, I'll probably be able to reuse this in a year or two because not only is it compatible with desktops, it also works with, uh, with laptops. And also you want to, uh, to use this model for SATA hard drives. And uh, so you can look up your computer system and see what type of hard drive you have. Again, if you have a computer that's probably four or five years old, I read that the odds are you have a SATA hard drive. There's two types. I can't remember what the other type was. But so anyway, so I'm probably going to get some, uh, some more use out of this. Now, I'm not going to show how I dismantled station. 
this is the back that comes with it. And there was an excellent uh, YouTube video put out by Ryan Blanco, and I will link to it, that shows how to take this HP all-in-one apart. And when you are taking it apart, there's a lot of cracking sounds, and if you don't know what to expect, it could be scary, but you don't need to be afraid to dive in and take the sucker apart. I followed his video tutorial, and no problem, easy peasy. And this is what the inside looks like. And he also goes through a description of what all the different components are. And for example, here under this panel, you can remove this. There's five screws and you've got the motherboard under here and you've got the CMOS, the, the battery, and you can remove that and reset the BIOS. Um, the RAM is here. I mean, I tried all of that, resetting that, removing the RAM, putting it back in to see because I did uh, do a little bit of YouTube searching to see if I could fix the problem and those were some recommendations, but that didn't do anything. Here's a fan and here is the hard drive. Now, um, when your computer crashes, most of the time the hard drive will remain intact. They're pretty durable. So even though you can't boot up your computer, don't despair. Uh, your data is probably still quite safe and available. You just need to remove it from this hard drive and transfer it to another, which is what I'm going to be doing today. So in this part here, there's one screw that's holding this hard drive case in place. So I've already removed the screw and you're going to be pulling back on this metal case because the hard drive connects in here. That's where the connectors are. So I'm going to shove this back to remove the hard drive casing. I'm just going to flip this around. Now I've removed this a couple of times already. So it's a little bit easier, but you might have to really tug. I had to tug and tug the first time to get this out. So I'm just going to pull back. Okay. Jiggle that a bit. And there's the hard drive. Now, when I flip this over, I can see it's a Seagate hard drive. And it's the SATA type. And it's two terabytes. And also the nice thing about this is that it um, it's compatible with um, with drives that are over three terabytes. I guess some of them probably can't handle the additional volume, but uh, this one will handle hard drives that are over three terabytes. So this is two terabytes, so it's going to work excellent. I'm going to put this away and I'm going to get this sucker out of the case. I don't know if you just heard the phone ring. I figure that's probably a telephone solicitor. We get those a lot. It's probably the Microsoft Windows computer support people calling to tell me that I have a virus in my computer. But sorry, it's not the... Microsoft Windows, that's the problem. It's the crappy HP hardware. Anyways, I'm going to remove these bolts from the side of the hard drive so that I can take it out of the casing. So I've already removed three of the screws and here's the last one. So there's where the connectors are and here's my box and the components that come with it, the AC adapter and unlike my husband I'm going to look at the instruction manual.
So the drive on this one looks a little bit different than the one that I've got, including on the back. But I have to connect these connectors to the connectors that are inside here. I don't know if you can see that. They're right in here, bottom, bottom right. So I'm going to flip this over and insert the drive in there and push in and you can feel it connecting. And close this and then it says to connect the power adapter to a wall socket then connect the USB cable from the dock to the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the adapter. And I already see a light on there, so that's good. Vast improvement over my computer anyways. Okay, and now I need to connect this USB cable from the box to my computer. So I'm going to put this cable in here. My laptop is already powered up. And I'm going to connect that onto the side. should be able to see my files. Oh yeah, there's the drive. Program files. Users. There's my user account. So you scroll to your user account under users and it says uh, click continue to access these files. So I'm hoping this is going to work. So I'm just going to let this run and see what happens. Okay, so I clicked on users and I clicked on my username and after a while it did come up with a list of files and I've got all of my files available on here which is absolutely awesome. I'm going to try opening one and see how it works. Hi, this is Christine. Welcome to Scrap and Rabbit. Oh, this is absolutely awesome. So I was able to recover my files with this. So now what I'm going to do is this is what it looks like in my computer. I don't know if you can see this but it appears as Windows E. It's the E drive on my computer. And here's my usernames. And under here I have all of my files, my documents, downloads, favorites, uh, pictures are in there. Yep, they're all in there and that's wonderful. I can access my entire hard drive from my old computer onto this thing. I can feel it vibrating right now. And I'm going to go ahead and copy all of these onto my laptop. And then when this laptop crashes, I'm going to try and keep it up to date with my backups. But if it does crash, I know that at least I can use this 
little device to copy my files over. So I hope this little tutorial helped you and know that just because your computer crashes you haven't lost all of those photos and and all of your files there's always a way to retrieve them and if you have any questions feel free to ask and have a nice day and hopefully soon happy scrapping bye